Hi, this is Save the Frogs founder and executive director, Dr. Carrie Krieger. I'm very happy to talk to you today all about how we are refrogging America by constructing wetlands for frogs. So I'm recording this video live from the Save the Frogs Education Center in Berkeley, California. We've got a lot of events lined up for this fall, so please come visit us. Check us out online at savethefrogs.com slash Berkeley. The reason we need to refrog America, get more uh, healthy frog populations, more places for frogs to live and breed is because frogs in California and worldwide are highly threatened with extinction, a couple thousand amphibian species on the verge of extinction. So frogs are among the most rapidly disappearing group of animals on the planet. About 200 amphibian species have gone extinct in recent years, which is several thousand times higher in extinction rate than is normal. One of the most significant problems that frogs face is habitat destruction. They get their forests and their swamps and their ponds destroyed, and that causes a lot of trouble. So one thing that we like our supporters doing is building frog ponds. And if you want to build a frog pond in your backyard or at your school, we've got lots of tips and ideas for you at savethefrogs.com slash ponds. And building ponds is really great for kids. They enjoy it. They get to learn a lot about science, a lot about frogs, and be helping frog populations. And frog ponds don't have to be big. And yeah, it gets kids outside. It's a good change of pace from their normal class. It gives them an ability to learn about ecology, wetlands, frogs, and uh, be inspired by actually doing something and creating a uh, tangible, positive impact on the world. And wetlands are also important. Uh, building new wetlands because climate change is upon us and every time we build a new wetland it gives amphibians one more possible place to live in a world where a lot of their ponds or cloud forests are drying up. So this frog from Yellowstone National Park, uh, it could benefit from new ponds because in Yellowstone uh, the ponds have been drying up from persistent droughts over the past 50 years. And this is a newt that I found in uh, the East Bay of California, it's east of the San Francisco Bay, and its pond had completely dried up, and there were about 13 scorched newts. So every time we build a new wetland, it gives one more possible place for an amphibian to survive in a dry climate. So because ponds and wetlands are so beneficial to amphibians, uh, we decided to put a large part of our Save the Frogs focus into building wetlands for frogs and for other wildlife. So in May of 2014, uh, we teamed up with Tom Biebekhauser of the Center uh, for Stream and Wetland uh, Restoration, and we designed 15 wetlands in California. And these wetlands, we still have not built built them. We're going to start building in October of 2014. And they can provide habitat for many of our native species, such as California chorus frogs, California red-legged frogs, our official state amphibian, California newts, rough skin newts, California tiger salamanders, so a lot of amphibians can benefit from the wetlands, and also dragonflies, birds, uh, lots of animals use wetlands, bats. And wetlands are good for humans, too, because uh, contrary to popular belief, a healthy wetland will actually reduce the mosquito population because the frogs, dragonflies, birds, and bats that inhabit the wetland will eat the mosquitoes that come to the site. 
So a few things about the wetlands that we're going to build and that we suggest for other people who want to build wetlands. You don't need to stock your pond with frogs. And in some places, it may not even be legal to do that. The best thing is just build it. And if it's suitable for the amphibians, they will find it and they will utilize it. And we don't put fish in our wetlands because fish like to eat frogs. And we're building these specifically for frogs. So to help out the frogs, don't add fish to your ponds. And we build about 16 to 24 inches deep. And this ensures that the wetland will dry up at least once a year. Uh, permanent water is much more attractive to non-Native American bullfrogs and certain, or um, most fish actually, do not want the water drying up. So we want the water drying up, and that reduces the populations of the fish and of the uh, American bullfrogs, which would eat our native frogs. So keep it shallow. It also keeps it safer in case kids end up in there. Um, better all around. So the first wetland that we designed is in Shingle Springs, California, east of Sacramento. It's on private land. And it's a 36 by 46 foot wetland that we designed that would go right on this spot. And so this is Tom Biebeckhauser checking the soil at the site to see how well it will hold water. And you can see the flagging around the edge of where we plan to build this pond. And here are the um, hosts for our October 14th, 2014 Wetlands Construction Workshop that will take place right at this site. We're going to build the wetland that day and teach you how to build the wetland, teach you everything we know about frogs and wetlands construction, and you'll get to help us build an actual wetland. So if you're interested in attending the October 14th, 2014 Wetlands Construction Workshop, in Shingle Springs, California, then just go to savethefrogs.com slash workshops and you can sign up there. This is the site of a wetland that we're going to build October 16th, 2014 in Fairfax, California at the Manor Elementary School. So this is back about a five minute walk behind the school. There's some forest and this spot that's currently used as a picnic area. And we're gonna build a 22 by 36 foot wetland right there. And this is Laura, the teacher there, who's been teaching environmental education to her students for many years. And so this is right where the wetland is going to be built and you can see the pink flagging demarcating the perimeter of the future wetland. So October 15th and 16th, we're holding a wetlands construction workshop. October 15th, we'll be in Berkeley at the Save the Frogs Education Center. For the first half of the day, we're going to give you presentations on frogs and wetlands. And then second half of the day, we'll be traveling around the East Bay to some current wetlands to learn all about uh, wetlands and what may have happened at the site of the wetland as far as human modification goes. And then October 16th, we will be at the Manor School in Fairfax, California, building this wetland. And you are welcome to join us. Savethefrogs.com slash workshops. So here's some kids from the Manor School where I spoke earlier this year. They will be very excited to be able to help build this wetland and then be able to use it for uh, outdoor education purposes for years to come and see all the amazing frogs that show up. These wetlands, uh, these sites that I'm about to show you, our schedule is to build them the last week, the last week of March 2015. This one is right in San Francisco on the edge of McLaren Park. And it's the June Jordan School for Equity. And behind the school is a big blacktop that used to be used for tennis. Now it's just cracked asphalt, uh, bad habitat for any type of wildlife and uh, pretty 
ugly and also not too good for climate change, being that it's just absorbing lots of sun's rays. So we designed two wetlands here. One's 40 foot diameter, one's 50 foot diameter. And this is the spot right here, so it's great location for the students. Uh, it would definitely get a lot of use because it's so close to the school. Currently, it's just got drains in it, it's asphalt, and no use for wildlife. So we can really help out the environment by turning this unusable location into a couple wetlands. This is the Clifford School in Redwood City, California, about a half an hour south of San Francisco. And behind the school, it, this used to be a wetland, but they pretty much drained it in order to create dry land for the school. So this is a deck, a frog pond observation deck. They have some occasional frogs in there when there's water, but uh, the ditch at its end is actually meant to drain water out of there. So it's not very good conditions for frogs and the water does not last very long. So down here, we're planning to build five small wetlands in a chain of different depths and that will help the frogs have water more of the year. And also up on the hill that you see back there is another great spot for a 26 by 30 foot wetland. And uh, this is one of the teachers at the school who's been helping out with environmental education and getting the kids out to look at the frogs that already live there. And this is a spot up on the hill, the big pond. So that's the frog pond observation deck. So this will definitely get a whole lot of use by the students. And there's the students at the school. I spoke there a few years ago, and they will be very excited to have this wetland or series of wetlands at their school. San Juan Batista, a couple hours south of San Francisco. We're going to build two different wetlands, and this first one is immediately behind one of the classrooms, 24 by 30 foot wetland. And teachers from the school who will be helping out and you can actually see kids back there. They're already interested, and there's not even frogs there yet. So they're going to be very excited. And this one is about a five-minute walk behind the school, a much larger wetland on the edge of a uh, uh, big field. Coast Redwood School, Santa Cruz County, California. There used to be a pond here that was built in the late 90s, but it was not built properly and it was not maintained, so there's no water in there anymore. We're gonna fix it up, build a 16 by 20 foot wetland. There's actually this deck on the right side of it because it's right beside the class, so it will get a lot of use by students. And we also built two, or designed two ponds on Oakland City property. This is up in the hills above Oakland at Joaquin Miller Park uh, with the Friends of Sossil Creek. And we designed a 26 by 30 foot wetland and a 28 by 34 foot wetland. And it's got great views over the San Francisco Bay. So I want to thank Nature's Path, Enviro Kids Cereal, and Frog Tape for their financial support. Uh, we have not raised the $61,000 that we need to build all these wetlands, but they have gotten us started. And we're looking forward to building these uh, first couple wetlands October 14th, 15th, and 16th. And I hope you can join us at a Save the Frogs Wetland Construction Workshop. October 14th, 15th, and 16th. And please tell everyone you know about Save the Frogs and help spread the word about our organization, our mission, our worldwide movement to protect amphibian populations and to promote a society that respects and appreciates nature and wildlife. Thanks a lot for helping Save the Frogs.